on presenting uh, about the SPFX form customizer. is a new feature has been released recently. My name is Ijaz Hussain. I work for a company called Content and Cloud. And here is my Twitter if you want to get in touch. So, so what is the SPFX form customizers extension? I mean, if you have worked in like me, InfoPath forms, if you have worked in custom list pages and injected your custom web part into those pages in classic shape and sites and uh, uh, you know build some navigation around the uh, you know item ids and stuff then this is heaven so we have now like you know it's a long weighted feature where we can override uh, the list experience or library experience using the spfx so that's really really great so i uh, so I wanted to try out. I wanted to see how we can put things together and potentially, you know, uh, we'll be building an application for the customer going forward. So what basically to get this started, so what's involved? Uh, there's a couple of steps I've listed here, uh, five of them. So we need to create a, you know, basic list and or library structure using content types. That's how I would uh, recommend use the content types. Then you create a customizer extension project using SPFX. Then we have to configure and start doing some debugging. And then once we're done, we deploy the app, our solution to app catalog. And the last step is we need to associate our custom component we build uh, uh, here. Uh, we need to do the uh, you know associate with our uh, the content type of the of the list. So let's get started. How we can get you know? Uh, so I'm going to show you demo first. So that is the customer list. Uh, so I've added some dummy data here. Now this list, it's based on this content type, which is the customer, and I've kept it really, really basic for the demo. So you can see I have some fields, and one of the fields is uh, is the project, is lookup field, and which is basically point to this list, which is a project. Uh, so it, it, this project doesn't have any content type, but, but you can add uh, a content type here if you want to. But my customer this uh, based on the customer content type. This is the structures. First, we need to create a structure. So once we know our list is there, our uh, content type is there, the next step is to create your solution, which uh, you just simply, if I scroll up, I've just listed in my blog here. So once you create a structure, so you basically, this is where you say, OK, select the extension, then what type of client side extension you want to create, select the form customizer, and then uh, the rest is, is going to all create for you. So and then once we have that solution created, then we go ahead and do some configuration here. But before we go into the configuration, let me show what's that look like in demo and then get back to the code and how we can conf configure and then how we can debug and how we can at the end associate our content type so that it's when we click on uh, add it or view it open up our custom custom view so let me open up the view mode let's suppose if i open this item so if i click on my one of the items so you can see so at this point now from uh, this is how i would envisage so from here onwards down so you have a literally blank canvas you can build whatever you want to build you can build custom forms, uh, step forms, model forms, or whatever you want to build. So basically, we have all that space for us right from the list environment. So here, this is I'm in the view mode. As you could see, I've just clicked it, and it's, this is my view mode. And I uh, so, the, so the main idea for me behind or for uh, you know, the, the feedback I get from the customers is, right, so especially with a couple of points, OK, they want to change the layout. So you know you have an opportunity to build different layouts, like you have two columns. Uh, they want to have when selecting the look, playing around with the lookup columns. You always like had a like if, let's suppose you have a massive massive list of the lookup column, and you want to search and select. It was really hard in out of the box. Uh, so you have to all the way get you know, a scroll down and you know so it's really hard uh, navigation if you have like a thousand item in the in the lookup list so that was another pain point and if you have to navigate and see for example at this point i want to go and see my project detail you can go right from this page so you don't have to go and switch to different page to see the detail of your lookup list so that's really cool so we are everything is on this page and then from here i've also so you don't have to go and add it from the list so, or you can build the custom links here. So if I want to add this 
particular record, you can just click on add it. It takes you to the added page and then you can do here. So, you know, in here, uh, I've tried to add some custom fields just for uh, demo purposes. So we know, you know, we, we have capability now to build some custom stuff. So, for example, I have a, a the, you know, the latest modern taxonomy picker control. In here, uh, with the PNPJS, I've added in there, then some select list, can add uh, select, then this is the outlook, um, the, the lookup column bit I was talking about. So now I can basically, if I need some item, let's say project 110, I simply can get there, select this, add into my associated, et cetera, and submit so I don't have to, or I can cancel this. So. I can select and navigate through here, or I can select this whole page, et cetera. So this is kind of a, a example of what possible things we can build now uh, with, with using this on customizers. So that's really, really great. So yeah, so when, if I can simply go to say submit, it's gonna go and submit the page, and then it's going, you know, re uh, take you back to, to this list and the list will be updated. So that's the demo. So let me go and show you how I build uh, and what it looks like in the code. So uh, that's the point where, uh, you know, we have run the Geoman generator to create our project. So once we are in there, the first thing you want to go into the serve.json file. Now this will be created for you. So you don't have to do much in there, but a couple of properties you have to change. F first one is a page URL. The page URL, make sure this part of the URL, which is if I, uh, yeah, it is the, you make sure it's point to your site. So you have a different uh, um, forms properties, one for the, so this is the default, one is the new form, one is the added form, one is the view form. And uh, and what they have is one thing, is first off, make sure you are pointing to your site. So leave, don't change the last bit of this URL from the layout. This needs to be same, you can see. Uh, then um, the component ID it will remain the same, so don't change this one. So page type is a, another thing which you can determine which page you are in, whether you are in the added mode. So eight is the new, six is the added, and the fourth is the view. And then you have a root folder of the list. So this is the list which I'll be using. And then if you have any, any custom property, the ID is there as well, but what happened is when you run the Gulp serve, so let me go back to debug there. So we've done this. Then there is a, a there's a Gulp serve command, which we normally do, but the idea is you can always open up a specific configuration, passing the parameter, say, a config equal to customer underscore added form, in my case, which will point to this one. And this basically what happened is the URL, it takes that URL, it get the component ID, page type, root folder, everything, and then open that added form for me with the ID equal to one. But you can go to the browser. Uh, once once it's open, uh, you can easily change ID to, you know, whatever I, other item you wanted to retrieve from. So that is just to starting point, but you can basically change the ID here to get the different items in the list. So, so at this point, we, you know, we, we, we can see like a blank, uh, and then let me go back to the code now uh, in terms of the building our demo. It's really, really simple. So a couple of things you have to consider in here. I'm just, so I'm getting the customer. So wherever the, you know, the, when you click it, so I'm get, we're getting some contact in the context, we will have it, all of the information about the list, all about the item. So that's really great. So once the page load or when we, you know, open the, any items. If it is not a new one, I'm going to grab the item ID, list title, and get the customer detail. And then within this call in the ship and service, I'm getting the, you know, related to the project detail as well. So I'm passing this data to my main component, but there's another thing which it did is, as, uh, as I've shown you previously, you can build the added URL by yourself. I can see, you can see here, so user doesn't have to go to the list and do that. So you can basically navigate from your custom form. So this is how I build basically using source item IDs. Uh, you get some relative URL, so you can hook up all together and then it will open up the added form or add new form from your form. So I'm passing those items properties to my component. And then from there, 
I'm just building a customer form, one big component here. And, and you know, so it, it's not massive enough solution, just sim- simple one, one component uh, I'm building here. But the idea is, so let me show you one. When we finish our saving data, so we need, we are, have to call this save, which is that method exists here. Basically, you have to call this method when you have done your like changes have been submitted to the list so that it can complete the whole life cycle of the save. So and then and then if you close, then you call uh, have this form dot close method. You need to call this one. So yeah, this and uh, yeah, that's that was the in terms of the building the form. I'm using in terms of the UI, you know, depend on, you know, I'm using both Fluent UI and I'm also using a, a custom library, which is called NT Design. So yeah, please check this out if you're interested. It's really, really good. So now coming back to the last step. Okay, we've done at this point, we've done debugging, we've done build, we've done with build of our, our application. Now we need to deploy that. So by default is not going to basic, we need to associate our component, which we def- the component ID we define and the sub.json you can see here. So we need to associate that with our list so that when we click on, as I click on our, my list, it open up our custom form, right? So that's the last step. What you need to do is basically, uh, I have created this a custom function in there. So I've used the CSOM way of doing it. So what I've done is basically I've, I've got the customer and then once I've got the customer list, and then uh, there's a three properties has been exposed, which are uh, in that content type, which my list is associated. So which is a new form component side ID, added form and display mode. So make sure pass that component ID, you have it here, which is this one, six, one, D, two, three, your one will be different. So, so that your custom component in that list has these three properties are associated. Once it's done, then every time you click on any of the list item, the custom form either is added new or detailed view will open up. So yeah, if uh, if you get this code, one is it's in here. I've put into uh, this is my blog, so you can go through there. I will also will be submitting this to the PNP wrapper, but you can also get the C sharp code of the function at the bottom of this here as well. So that's all from me. If you have any question, great stuff. Uh, if you want to, there might be a couple of questions there in the chat. You could take them up there. But for now, yeah. we're going to move over to Hugo. So awesome stuff, Jazz. Thank you.